So today started out interestingly enough with this account here, a can-do civil servant at the USDA, also tagging themselves in as the former Department of Justice and Federal Reserve, actually threatening to withhold food during rationing because, oh my God, you snapped at me. This person is actually pretty proud of that, too. You can see where they have retweeted, you know, somebody talking about this because, hey, you know that? That's acceptable. Now, by the end of it all, of course, this person is buzzwording their way out. And on top of that, they went in. By the end of the day, they had changed up everything that was in their description, no longer noting that they work for the USDA. Then things, they started to get bizarre because this from Deadspin started making its rounds, talking about this person conning the Washington press, saying a lot of their resume that they like to show off. Yeah, maybe it's not exactly what they're saying. And remember, all of this is from a blue check mark meaning that this is a quote-unquote verified account telling us that everything that they say in that, it's actually true. So hey there, so today we are returning to that wonderful world of the internet where bizarre things seem to happen all the time, and if you give it enough time, well, something interesting is bound to transpire. So like I said before, today started out with a rather interesting conversation, and I want you to catch all of it here. If you are not already obsessed with your constitutional rights, this is a good time to become so. They make power grabs during times of crisis. Robert here comes in and says, power grabs. I can't believe you have an Italian surname. There were thousands of people in bars last night. Who's being oppressed? List them. Point them out. Mark comes back again and says, hey, again, reading comprehension failure. You may have some incomprehensible reason for finding it difficult to believe I'm Italian, but I am not at all surprised that you're a government flunky. And then comes the threat here. You can see this tagged in. This is happening, whether you like it or not. There will be curfews, freedom of assembly restricted, and boy, it was not wise to snap at me. If it gets really bad, food will be rationed. Take a wild guess which department would ration the food. So that is obviously a callback to their description here. Here for the jokes, Massachusetts native, total scoundrel, can-do civil servant for the USDA, former Department of Defense, and Federal Reserve. They're telling you here that they have power, and if given the opportunity when the restrictions come, they would use that power to go out and pay this specific person back because, hey, I'll have control over the rationing of food, and it was not wise for you to snap at me. Now, this, of course, it gets attention. You can see Sean Davis here has a verified account as well, noting that an employee of the USDA appears to be threatening to withhold food in the event of rationing for someone who criticized him on Twitter. Now, this guy, he appears to be really proud of the fact that he made that threat because you can see him retweet that. You know, he's saying, ooh, you know, what can you do about me? You're not going to be able to do anything. There's no accountability in this process. Here's another retweet. This is right from his timeline, took snapshots of it, and you'll notice this stuff has disappeared by now, but he retweets common sense saying, hey, you may think that you're a hot shot inspecting wiener all day, but try rationing fa- my family's food over a Twitter fight, and you'll find out what the Second Amendment's all about. You're as mature as my 18-month-old daughter. The USDA is so proud, I'm sure. Now, inevitably, as with most things, blue check mark, race and disability, something like that in buzzword comes in. As you can see in this, Bryce Timmons says, hey, does the uh, USDA know you're using your government position on Twitter to threaten food rationing? Because I'm going to guess that's not consistent with their policy, and you see the tag in there can correct me, but I think you moved out of the realm of protected speech when you did that. Basically, you can't use your position of prominence, your position of power, to threaten somebody because you don't like what they say. So this guy, he responds there, saying, well, geez, I guess you got to tell them that I'm out of control, man. Tell them there's an angry, disabled black man on the internet with an Italian surgeon name, and he was mean to you, so he needs to be fired in the midst of a national emergency. Let me know how that goes. As with most controversy, too, 
This person has scrubbed the USDA by the end of the day. They've taken it totally off their timeline. You can see the beginning two statements are the same. The end statement is the same. But instead of that mention, it's been replaced by can-do guest at the Marriott or was it at Hilton Hotels. That stuff, it's totally been taken out. Now, the internet, of course, never stops talking. As you look at that conversation, as it keeps going forward, you'll notice that his posts had been ratioed. But during these talks, you have things brought up like LinkedIn, and you have things brought up about his past. Look at his history. This person is awfully shady. His background and behavior in the past, it's disturbing. Huh, I wonder what that's about. So someone actually clarifies that. I cannot remember who that is either. If you catch this video and you want to comment and I notice it, I'll definitely pin it to give you recognition. But they note this article from Deadspin. Talking about our blue check mark here. Did our blue check mark con the Washington press? Or is that what the Russians would want you to think? So the article starts out by asking a simple question. How hard is it to con people in Washington, D.C.? Easier than you might think, considering it's the place where things like nuclear war get decided. The National Security Circuit, in particular, with its think tank fellowships and massive government contracts, is one of the juiciest rackets around. Now, as far as our boy blue check mark is concerned, I want to cover two things from this article. Number one, I want to cover the resume lies, according to them. Number two, I want to cover some of the volatility. I'm going to compress this as adequately as possible. I'll leave out quite a few things, but still, it'll give you an idea of what kind of person you're dealing with. So, Robert C. here, he says that he has a resume at 31 years old, where he had served in the Office of Secretary of Defense. He had worked for the Bureau of Diplomatic Security at the Department of State and as a contractor for the Department of the Army. He also lists himself on LinkedIn as a political consultant and a fellow with Hillary Clinton's campaign, and he had racked up quite a few press clips because of it. From Rutgers, MSNBC, Fox News, Politico, The Boston Globe, BuzzFeed, Business Insider, Daily Beast, and many many more. Now, when you look at his articles, they have a list of them, too, and they tell you as well, just over a past month, he had graced the prestigious Council on Foreign Relations website, the Atlantic's defense one. He had regularly blogged for the Huffington Post. He had done all of these things on a resume that, at best, was exaggerated. If you look at his resume, for example, many sources close to him say they had never held a job that went beyond administrative assistant. His opinion should not be taken seriously, said one military colleague who requested anonymity to avoid retaliation from him, which we'll talk about in just a moment. The Clinton campaign, they have no list of him being a fellow for anyone. In fact, when he went and provided his quote-unquote source, they could not go in and verify that. But even if they did, that position he was shopping, it's just an informal, unpaid intern gig. So it's not something like he was saying. Now, when he talked about where he was stopping when he was outside of the Navy, apparently he had done a little bit of work as a contractor. But his contractor work, if you look at what his resume looks like, he adds uh, 2009 to 2015 to discuss it. It sounds like he did secretarial and administrative work. Responsible for managing correspondence, scheduling and travel arrangements, insured travel arrangements for guests, honorariums, expenses, and appropriate administrative support. Now that's, of course, not how he sold his expert credentials. MSNBC, they had officially introduced him as a Defense Department official in a segment about how to best solve the Syrian civil war, where he sat opposite a four-star general in that. So, of course, I mean, when you go through all of this stuff, it's really interesting what is listed. Then they get into the volatility portion, and the volatility portion is pretty interesting. Now, they talk about his military background. As a yeoman, he landed in unspecified trouble. He was sent to galleys for menial work. Not long before his discharge, Robert C. started beefing with a fellow worker down there. The menial grudge, or mutual grudge, had escalated until supposedly finding out about his rival's shellfish allergy. Blue checkmark threw a tray of shrimp on them. Now, he says that he was discharged under honorable uh, 
without conditions, and then he received an honorable discharge. He denies any fights or any disciplinary actions taken against him. Asked specifically about that shrimp incident, he said, that's not accurate. I can't comment any further. Then they list volatility outside of it. A messy breakup in the fall of 2015 led an ex-girlfriend to file a restraining order against him, which he violated at least six times in a year, according to public court documents. Another one-time friend filed an emergency protective order against him. Yet another person filed a restraining order, which I saw a copy of, they say, this week, while another tells me they are filing a police order for harassment. Now, they talk about him, too. Basically, traveling from one house to the other, crashing for months at a time with friends and relations, oftentimes without paying rent, until people ask him to move out. And when they talk about his behavior within that, they discovered his tendency to call them, to stalk them, and to make threats against their families. Huh, that sounds pretty interesting, doesn't it? Now, when you start running through the rest of it, too, man, I mean, it gets absolutely crazy. I mean, they're talking about law enforcement and involvement. They're talking about phone calls and manipulation. Like I said, all of this stuff... At best, you're talking about someone that is fraudulent. At worst, you're talking about somebody that's volatile and possibly dangerous. Again, according to this, which fits exactly what we saw today. We see somebody that says they're a can-do civil servant with the USDA, where people are saying, hey, I contacted the USDA, and this guy, he's not there. You see him make threats against somebody right when he's challenged, because of course, that's the go-to as well. This stuff, it's seems like the playbook here. And this is somebody that's verified and verified off of what. But anyway, you tell me what you think. I mean, this, it is absolutely bizarre. Yep, the internet. The internet indeed. But anyway, like I said, give me your comments. Now, in closing, I want to thank you for showing up. I want to thank you for participating. You make this stuff possible. Not enough people say that. I think that's very important, too, because your time is valuable. I don't want to monopolize it either. I want to say if you like the channel, you know, subscribe to it and all of that. But I also, I want to thank you for being here because that stuff, it's important. You make channels work, and hopefully you'll show up for other videos. Regardless, though, again, thank you for being here. Appreciate you, and we'll see you next time. Positive.